what martial arts taught me was not to fight. It taught me the ability to walk away. What's happening, everyone? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 702. 702? <laughs> Whatever it is. My guest today is Walter Jones. Stick around. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here for the show, founder of Whistlekick, where everything we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to check out everything that we're doing to that end, check out whistlekick.com. It's our online home. It's also the easiest place to find our products. Yeah, the stuff that we make. And you're probably going to find something in there that you like. So head on over. And don't forget, when you check out, use the code PODCAST15. That'll save you 15% on anything we have there. Now, if you want to go deeper on this episode of the show or check out the other episodes, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You'll see new episodes of the show twice a week. And the whole purpose of everything we do, well, it's to connect and educate and entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world. If you want to support that work, there are lots of ways you can help out. You could make a purchase, maybe tell a friend about us, or join the Patreon. If you think these new shows are worth 63 cents a piece, not to mention all the old episodes you get, consider supporting us at $5 a month by visiting patreon.com slash whistlekick. And you can sign up. If you do, you're going to get access to more exclusive content, bonus merch, all kinds of cool stuff. We're in there every single week dropping new stuff for you. And if you want the full list of all the ways you can help us out, as well as a constantly shifting mix of stuff behind the scenes, photos, cool stuff like that, check out whistlekick.com slash family. You're going to have to type it in. No links, but it'll be worth your time. Now, all of you may not know today's guest by name, but you absolutely know him by character. Walter Jones is the original Black Ranger from Power Rangers. We met at Rhode Island Comic Con, hit it off. What a great guy. And here we are talking now. And it was a fun conversation. We talk about how martial arts really did set him on a path that includes not only Power Rangers, but so much other stuff. And I think you're going to dig it. So stick around. I'll see you at the outro. Walter Jones, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hey, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Good. I'm good. I'm glad we're getting to do this. Had a fun yes, time talking with you at Comic-Con. I've been looking forward to this one. Yes, I've been at the Comic-Cons, meeting the fans, signing autographs, and uh, inspiring young people to be the best that can be. You like doing that stuff? I love it. I, I love I love the responsibility. I love the fact mm. that, um, you know, I, I've been blessed with this opportunity to inspire minds and make people want to be, um, you know, creative and and Good hearted. Yeah. Makes a difference. You know what I'm saying? It does. It yes, does. We need that in the world. We, we definitely need more of that in the world. Is it difficult to be, I would call it on for several days in a row at, at an event like that? Is it difficult? I, I won't say that it's difficult, but it's work. Mm -hmm. It is. It's definitely, um, I feel responsibility. I feel like, um, there are people, we, we have three generations of fans at this point. The show's coming up on our 30th year anniversary, <laughs> Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And, um, and because of that, there are people that have been waiting their whole life to meet me. So when they meet me, I want them to get the best part of me. I don't want them to get Walter Jones is tired and he's like, hey, man, you know, wow. Yeah, how you doing? You? Ooh, it's been a long day. I'm not trying to give them that. I want to give them the energy that they that they they've thought about the whole time. They're like, man, I would love to meet Walter Jones and I would love to see him at his best and like feel his energy. And so I I turn on and I give out that energy because that is um that is the gift that I want to give them. So when they walk away, they feel like I got I feel I feel satisfied. I met him. He was everything I thought he was going to be because that is definitely who I am. Mm. But, you know, we have our off and on days. We have days where it's not the best day. You know, I got a cold. I'm not feeling well. I had a death in the family. My girlfriend's on my nerves. You know, these things happen. And it's just part of being a human being. But um, when I'm when I'm there and I'm I'm, I'm actively trying to give uh, my fans and the people that I meet. Uh, a memory to walk away from that is going to be pleasant. So mm. uh, in that sense, I am on and I'm working 
Um, and then when the when I'm done, it's it's funny because the last part of the show, the very last part of the show, that that five minutes after I'm done, when I decide, okay, I'm, I'm it's the end of the day and I'm packing up, that is the worst time to approach me <laughs> because because at that point I get a little more, I can become impatient because I'm like, okay, I've been here all day. I You're was ready here to all go. day. If you didn't come to see me. And that eight hour window that I was here, but now you come in and see me right when I'm shutting down and I've kind of turned off that on button, yeah. then I'm not as you don't get the, the Walter that is the happy one that I want to give you. You know, it's like I, I'm still nice. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not as patient, a little more like, ah, OK, so really, I was here all day. You know that, right? <laughs> you get a little more like the father, Walter. Uh, I Listen, son, I need you to be on top of your game. You know, that kind of thing. You got to so, show up on time. Yeah, show up on time. You know, you have a responsibility to be to do your thing and, and you know, be a good person. <laughs> Let's go. Sorry. The word you used a few times in there was responsibility. And yes. I find that when someone is is gravitating towards a certain word, it usually means something to them. So what does responsibility mean to you? Well, um, responsibility in general is, uh, is being aware of what you create and taking responsibility while well, taking accountability for, mm. for that. You have a responsibility to, to shine, to shine a light, you know, and, and, and to let other people be in that light. Otherwise, what you give out is something that's that's negative. And um, and if you do that, then you have the responsibility of, of dealing with that, of what that is. You know, because if it's something you created, then um, you gotta you gotta take accountability for it. That's why how, how I feel. It's just like kind of a yin and yang of the world. You know, it's like what you give out, you get back, kind of thing. Right. So um I, I feel, and then as, as a role model, I mean, we are, our show, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, um, went from being this quirky, weird, strange show to the number one hit show, uh, number one, number one kids show in the world. Yeah. Uh, it's in 40 countries and probably 90 languages in that and becoming a, a role model. I feel a need to want to uh, represent myself as the best possible person so that I can inspire other people to be the best possible person. You know, and again, like I said, I mean, we all have our days, our ups and down days, and I am not uh, 100% golden, but, you know, in general, I am. I got a good heart. I want to be a good person. I want to make other people happy. I want to help the world be a better place. And uh, I want other people to want the same as me because and doing that it actually becomes a better world sure where did that come from was that something instilled by your parents well i think so my family my um my, my mom taught me you know to be a very loving person and to be, to be um you know to treat people the way i want to be treated i mean that, that was one of the things hey 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 you 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 treat people the way you want to be treated. That also comes from religion. I, I grew up in a in a Christian household with a Christian family. Every Sunday we'd have we go to 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 church, and then we go back to my grandmother's house, and we'd have a big family dinner, and all the kids would play, and it was like so. Um, that was part of my upbringing, and mm -hmm. and the, the you know the the Christian faith in itself is is a uh, you know, belief system of you know, trying to be as God-like as you can be. You know, we are not gods. Um, we're made in God's image and we are meant to try to be as close to God as we can be. Um, it's a philosophy mm -hmm. uh, that either, even if you're not religious, you can take. It's, it's a still the same thing. It's just like you know, being, being the best that you can be in your life, you know, to make your life a, a, a life that that's positive and that's um, pleasing to other people so that, you know, if you come back in another life, that you'll have a better life or just, you know, if you throw a rock in the water and it creates ripples, mm -hmm. you know, in the world, if you consider that to be the world, that's what I do. I figure 
You know, with those ripples that I make, the more positive they are, the more positive I get back. So, uh, it's, I, I don't know. It's that's my philosophy. Just like what you give out, you get back. And that's sure. not necessarily the case for all people because there's a lot of buttheads out there that <laughs> are doing quite well. You know, it's quite true. well for themselves. But you don't know. You know, there's everybody gets there. I mean, there's karma. I think it's a karmic thing. You know, get back what you put out. Yeah. I get it, it, out. It's incorporated into pretty much every every major philosophical system, whether it's you know religion or not. You know this this Absolutely. idea of balance and and having not having to be, but the benefits of being a good, positive person. Right. And you know we find that philosophy incorporated into martial arts. It's a little more subtle. You Absolutely. know if, if if you and I are training together and I'm a jerk and I'm you know punching you in the face or hitting you harder than I need to, that affects my training in the way right. that you're going to show up for me and everything. Exactly. Like, Cause maybe that next throw is going to be a little harder than you wanted it to be. That's right. <laughs> Most of yeah. us have had that experience, you know, yeah. either I mean, we slipped and paid the price for it or, or yeah. vice versa. Uh, you know, and I think martial art gives you a healthy respect for that too. I mean, like it started in church and then when martial arts, when I started taking martial arts, I, I gained a, a self-respect um, throughout that, through that, because it was like, yeah, yeah you know, uh, when I was young and I started training, it wasn't about um, being conscious of other people and, and trying not to hurt them. You know, it's like it wasn't about, OK, this is the way that we were taught. We were trained. Look, these are things that you can do that can really seriously hurt someone. But the idea is that you're not here to hurt anyone. You're here mm -hmm. to defend yourself if needed. If needed, that means you don't have to fight. You can walk away. You can walk away. And if they force you to fight, well, then they earned the butt kicking they got coming. <laughs> they earned it. You know, it's like, right. hey, you really want this butt whooping, huh? You know, it's like, I, um, it's funny because I, I was studying martial arts and um, I studied Ishinru to start. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was a kid, my, um, my cousin was uh, a brown belt and studying Ishinru and was was really good at it. It was like coming home with these trophies and so forth and so on. And, and I was in a single family household and I guess my mom couldn't really afford it. And then he was trying to get me there. But my aunt was like, look, we'll pick him up and take him with us. So uh, my mom got me into martial arts. I think I was actually, I think I was bullied in school one time. And mm. that's what motivated her. And even then I had the presence of mind to figure out that I didn't have to fight. There was a way to get beyond the situation without fighting. So I think I recall I was in elementary school and uh, two boys came up and they were like, um, we were, I was in the lunch line. They were like, give me your lunch ticket. And I'm like, I'm not giving you my lunch ticket. Give me your lunch ticket, your ticket, or we're going to kick your butt in the playground after, after lunch. And I'm like, well, I guess we're going to be fighting because I'm not giving you my lunch ticket. So, they're, I, so they stayed in line behind me. I got my lunch. They followed me to the table. They sat down next to me. And one of the boys goes to reach into my plate and I spit all over my food. Now he's mad. Oh, oh yeah, we're going to kick your butt when we get outside. He was like, you should have let me just have it. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm, I'm hungry. I got I to gotta eat. This is my lunch ticket. If you're hungry, you should have had your own lunch ticket, you know? And I was like, you know, whatever. So they were, we're going to kick your butt when we get outside. And it's too big. Two guys, they're bigger than me. I was, I was always small as a child. Um, I didn't get my growth spurt until like 10th grade, but like mm. even in ninth grade, I was, a, I wrestled as a 98 pounder and I was like 4'11". So I was small. Um, I was always cute. I hated that. Didn't want to be cute. <laughs> even today, I'm like, don't call me cute. I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Give me both. <laughs> I'm handsome and I'm sexy. Let it be known. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, let me let me put that down in the note. There you go. Handsome, I'm sexy. I'm yeah, sexy. No, not cute. Hey, hey, right. hey. Keep going. So uh, so anyway, so these uh, these boys were like, we're going to kick your butt when you get on the playground. I'm like, all right, well, you know, we're going to we're going to tussle. It's, it's OK. You know, like, and they're like, you must be scared. I'm like, nope. So we walk out the door. And I am scared because I don't know what I'm going to do with these two bigger boys. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm like, I see uh, a basketball hoop, but it's like it's like an old school basketball hoop. It's two poles that go up and make like a P and then the backboard sits on that. Right. Mm -hmm. But the backboard is missing because at this school, the you know, the backboard is torn down and it's just the two 
poles that look like peas. So I see the pole. I run towards it. I climb up the pole because I'm a good climber. I climb up the pole and I get to the top and I'm sitting in the peak. And I'm looking down at them. They're like, how did you get up there so fast? I'm like, I climbed. Oh, well, come down here. We're going to kick your butt. I was like, you're going to kick my butt. You got to come up here. And they're like, oh, well, I'm going to come, gonna come up there. So they're trying to climb. And they climb up like two or three, like maybe a foot or two. And then they slide back down. And they're getting tired. And they're, they're trying. And I'm like looking at them going, you don't know how to climb? What's wrong with you? Like climbing is easy. Like use your feet. I'm giving them direction. I'm like, and they're trying to get up and they can't get up. And I'm like, man, I come down the pole. Man, let's show you how to get up here. I helped them get up the pole. They get up the pole. I, it became more of a thing about the pole than them taking my lunch. And they, I, I, I had something to teach them now. So I yeah. taught them how to climb the pole. They got up the top of the pole and then they had to figure out how to get down. And I left. <laughs> I was like, all right, I love it. see you fellas later. But they never bothered me again. But that was the way I handled that situation. Well, when I got home and I told my mom about how I handled these two bullies that were trying to take my lunch, I think maybe she was thinking they're going to be back again tomorrow. I need to teach my son how to fight. Um, I grew up in Detroit, predominantly, you know, black city, um, kind of a rough city at the town. It was the murder capital of the world. So I was a little boy and, you know, she was a single mom and trying to figure out how do I help my son uh, navigate through, you know, the things he's going to encounter in this world? Yeah. So she, I think she decided to put me in martial arts. So I get in martial arts. Here I am. And um, my karate instructor, Mr. Walker, uh, he's, he's a badass, you know, definitely a, a grown man. You want to respect black belt. And, um, you know, uh, I've not seen a man like this before in my life because he's, he's a tough dude. And he's teaching us kicks and punches and, and giving us a proper technique and so forth. So on definitely has my complete respect. Um, and then I have my cousin in class who's a brown belt and, you know, quick and fast and, you know, probably one of the best fighters there at school. Um, so I'm inspired by him as well. And um, and we start, you know, we start training. So, you know, we start off our training with kicks and punches and and learning katas and so forth and so on. And then we start doing training where we we start sparring against each other. And um, and there's girls in this class as well. And the girls, um, the girls don't wear cups, but the boys do. Mm -hmm. But the boys don't always get cups right away because you didn't know you needed a cup. You didn't know you needed a cup. I mean, never needed a cup before, <laughs> but I'm wearing a cup now, you know, like eventually. But I would spar. And and I remember I had to spar against this girl named Sheila. And Sheila was had been in this karate class for a longer time for me, than me and was quite comfortable and, and understanding the whole sparring situation. And when we would spar, we're supposed to spar at six inches. So you're not supposed to touch. You're supposed to you know, point spar. So, right. you know, you stay six inches away from the target, but if you get close and you get it, sometimes you make, you connect. You sh sometimes it happens, mm -hmm. but we, you know, we try to get away. Anyway, um, I was sparring with Sheila and Sheila knows she's not supposed to kick me in the groin, but Ishiru is a martial art that actually is focused on kicking in the groin. It's like, mm -hmm. that's one of our favorite techniques. He's like, wow, got you. And that's it. You know, if you, get, if you do Taekwondo, you got high kicks, expect an Ishiru guy to go for your cup. Or yep. if you're not wearing a cup, you're wrong. And um, well, you know, I was, I was learning these high kicks and I threw a high kick and she got me. And I went to the floor and was like, whoa, okay. But then... We had to keep sparring. So she threw a high kick and she caught one. And she went to the floor and was like, got up. And it was like, I felt a little bit like, all right, well, that's what you put in the world. That's what you got back. <laughs> but, but, you know, I was a girl. I wasn't used to kicking girls, but she was a bigger girl than me. And, and, and she had this temper where she, her cheeks just started blowing up with air. And she was like, <sighs> and she had the, the scowl. She was going to get me now. She was going to hurt me for sure. And uh, I had to learn to, to deal with, the fear of this woman that was going to come at me with this rage now. And, and, you know, it kind of made my mind focus the fear of being hurt. Um, made my mind focus on 
how to evade and how to block and how to protect myself. So all the things that I was learning really kind of came into play because now I had to be quick and in and out and she was trying to get me, but I'm not going to let her get me again. So I'm like blocking and staying away and I'm, I got to get this point to like make it stop. <laughs> so, so, you know, eventually I, I started winning these spar matches with these people that were bigger and taller than me. And I got faster and I got more uh, skillful and, then I started competing at tournaments and I was winning my katas and, uh, and then I had to compete um, in a Pee Wee Michigan State Championship. championship. And uh, it was probably the biggest tournament I had been in. Um, and by this point, I had gone through my belt. So I was now uh, a green belt, I believe. <clears throat> and, uh, and I was fighting against other people that were black belts and so forth and so on. And I, again, I'm small, I'm super small. So uh, sparring against these other people, and some of them were my family. I had to fight against my cousin, not my cousin who was the bigger belt and the bigger guy to me, but a younger cousin that was about the same age as me, but also had been studying martial arts for a much longer time than me. But we ended up going through the rankings and we had to fight each other, which was weird, but um, we did it. And, uh, and I, I kept winning and eventually, I, I had to fight the, the main guy, the big guy. It was a Taekwondo guy. And he was much taller than me, had kicks that were amazing, like super fast, strong. Uh, and it kind of felt like for me, it felt like that Karate Kid movie, because here I am going against this guy. And it's like I made it through the rankings. Somehow I'm fast and quick. And, and I think that was my thing is I had speed um, and point sparring. You know, it wasn't about knocking him down or knocking him down. It was about you know, getting in the position, yeah. catching, you know, you know, like that was, that was six inches from your nose or that was like a top to the neck or, you know, I actually kicked you in the ribs, but you know, it's like kind of thing. Um, um, but this kid was so good. And during my sparring matches, I would spar and then I would go and watch him and he would take people out like that. He was so quick. His kicks were strong. He was like, he was really no, he was hurting people. And a lot of them were kicks to the face. So we had to fight for the, the championship. And this is the first time I've ever been in this place um, fighting for a championship. Uh, and this guy is so quick. I just remember uh, we, we start sparring and uh, I forget, I think, I think he kicked me to the ribs and he, he got me pretty good. Um, and he got the first point. So then uh, he threw one of those high kicks, going for the face. I caught him in the cup, right? So I got a point. So now I'm like, all right. Oh, they gave it to uh, you. We, they gave it to me. And I, I, it was, I don't think I kicked him completely in the cup, but okay. I, the kick was there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I was like, and, and at this point, this is later on, we're all aware that it happened. So everybody's wearing a cup. It's not like nobody's coming to the tournament not wearing a cup. That's everybody's. We're ready. And sometimes that cup gets sure. dropped, you know, and sure. that happens, you know, and, you know, we're, we're not supposed to connect, but if we do, that was a point. Um, sometimes you get kicked in the face. You're not meant to, cause we're trying to, we're trying to, you know, keep it. We're trying to point spar, but you know, when you got people rushing in at each other, momentum, everything happens. It's like, you just kind of happen sometimes. For it sure. happens. It just happens. So um, we go in head to head. And this guy, I think he, he catches me with another kick. So he got two points. I got one. And he's just so quick. I, I can't get in on him. And he's long. He's taller than me. And I'm like, I, 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 I'm trying to get on the inside. I can't figure out what to do. And so, you know, he's rushing in on me. I, I, I'm evading him. But I back up and take about three steps. And I decide I'm going to do a running, flying, jump sidekick which was my specialty because I, I could jump high. People never can expect that I would jump so high because I hop, so it's tiny, but I can jump up in the air. So I go back, I set, and, you know, I, I find a moment, I run in, I do a jump, flying sidekick, and I get him in the chest. And he's like, he's blown away. He didn't expect that I was going to be able to jump that high. One, two, I caught him, and now he's mad. He's giving me the same face the girl gave me. You know, he's like, He's looking at me like, oh, I'm about to hurt you. And I am fear. How, how, old, how old are you at this time? I'm maybe 10 or 11. Okay. That's what I thought. 11. And I'm in 
fear, like this guy's really going to try to hurt me. Oh my gosh. Uh, and so I decide I'm going to try to jump flying sidekick again. Uh, no, he, he saw that one coming a mile away. I try to I go up to do it. He hits my leg. I hit the ground, spin, almost fall. And he attacks, but I get away. And I'm like, okay, I try something, a few other things. I think at this point, we're like two and two points. It's, it's the final point. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what to do. I'm just trying to figure out what to do. And I run in to go do a jump flying sidekick again, knowing that he's going to block me the same way he did before. But instead of doing a kick, I throw a chop to the neck and I get the point and I won. So I was, I became the, the Michigan Pee Wee state champion, probably my proudest moment as a child, because I, yeah. um, I overcame adversity. Like it was like, I, I fought people. I thought I would never win against. And I, I won. And it was, like, it gave me a lot of confidence. Um, and it also taught me that my fear was okay. That it was okay to be afraid, but when I needed to, I needed to focus and and figure it out, you know. So that was that was part of the process. And um and after that, my my mom wasn't afraid of me being bullied so much anymore because she's like, oh, I guess he can handle himself. And it's funny because I um the the kids in the neighborhood they would see me come home in my karate gi and be like, oh yeah, you're taking karate, yeah, you're you know you got to fight mm-hmm. me. It was an invitation. Oh, you! I want to see what you can do. Because, like, you know, we watch Bruce Lee movies. We watch these karate movies. And we would play and wrestle. And, you know, it's just, you know, rite of passage. It's like, you know, you're, you're, you test each other out in the neighborhood to see how tough you are so you know where you stand. And um, there were some kids that just didn't get it, though. They, I mean, they really wanted to fight. Like, you know, was it, it was beyond wrestling. I was, I could wrestle anybody. Let's wrestle. I'll wrestle anybody. I didn't care how big you were. Let's speak of wrestle. And I was pretty good at it. So, you know, but we weren't trying to hurt each other. We weren't trying to break each other's bones or cause blood or, sure. or anything like that. But there were a couple of kids in my neighborhood that were just a little crazier than that. <laughs> like, they just wanted to like fight. And I'm like, yo, and I was, what, what martial arts taught me was not to fight. It taught me the ability to walk away. It taught me the ability to stand strong and be like, I'm not afraid of you. So what are you going to do? And if you strike first, now I have permission to kick your butt because I'm not supposed to strike first. My, um, you know, I've been taught things that, you know, that show me how to hurt a person and a strike or two, and it could really hurt you. So I don't want to cause that kind of damage. I want to just, uh, I want to just walk away. We, we can agree to disagree. And, um, you know, it, it taught me, that philosophy taught me to be able to stand my ground towards anybody and be like, hey, look, man, it's, it's okay, right? Uh, but I'm not scared, you know, like, I'm not scared. Oh, you, you're not going to run? No, I'm not going to run. I, if you want to wanna fight, hit me. Because I can't hit you first. I'm not going to say because I can't hit you first, but I'm like, hit me. That invitation throws a lot of people off. They're like, what? Wait, you you're supposed to be scared. You're what do you mean? Hit you. <laughs> no, I mean if you're going to do something then do it. Oh, but I don't have to wait for it. I'm not going to give you 15 20 minutes to figure out when to hit me. I'm not going to argue. I'm going to say, "All right, well, hit me." Oh, you're not going to hit me? Well, I'm done. You're, you know, you you didn't do it. Where did where did that confidence come from? You know, cuz it's you said it yourself that you were still afraid. I was still afraid, but the process of going through the adversity and dealing with being put in a situation in a controlled situation, um, karate tournaments, mm-hmm. karate class, sparring. I mean, we had this thing we did called a California rush where the, co- the instructor would put you in the middle of the class and then send like six people in at you all at one time. And so you just had to like, you know, you were bobbing and weaving and tucking and kicking and, and moving. And like, it was like a, a thing and, you know, in the karate class, I mean, we're all working together. So nobody's really trying to hurt you, but they're trying to get you. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, they're, they're trying to knock you down, move you, you know, kick you, like mess you up. And um, it, that training, that being in that circumstance, you learn to see different things 
And at time that slows down. It's like you see it coming. That guy's rushing. If I step to the side, I can catch him with a side kick or I can I can catch him with a punch. This guy is coming on the other side behind me. I'm looking everywhere. I'm like mm-hmm. seeing things as they come in and timing out when it's gonna, when the impact is gonna happen and how to evade it or block it or whatever, or attack it before it gets here to stop it before it even happens. Like that mechanism, uh Help me to be more confident that even if I did get caught, I've been kicked before. Mm. I've been punched before. I, I got through that. You know, I, I, I'm resilient. And so um, I think in Detroit, my fear was it wasn't just fighting. It was like bottles and glass and pipes and knives and guns. And, you know, like, is it going to escalate to, you know, to death? You know, it was, like, it was scary. Um, so the option is to walk away. Don't fight. But don't be a punk because if you're a punk, meaning if you're scared, if you, are, if you don't stand up for yourself, then it's an invitation for bullies to keep coming at you. It's like, it just is. It's like, well, if I don't stand up for myself, they're never going to have any respect for me. And if they don't respect me, then they look at me as nothing. And they'll treat me as nothing. And then they'll make everybody around them treat me as nothing. Like, look, this person, you can walk over and they won't do anything. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to fight anyone. I'm saying that you have to stand up for yourself. You have to say, stop it or no, or fine, what? Well, all right, forget it then. I mean, I, I there were so many times where I, I was, I was put in a situation where there was going to be a fight where I just said, you know, well, what are you going to do? Oh, you ain't going to do nothing. And fine. I walk away. Mm. Whatever. I gave you a chance as I'm walking away. I gave you a chance. You would do nothing. Forget it, man. Whatever. It's all right. It's over now. Because you're obviously not, you know, the easy target that they thought you were going to be likely because you were smaller. Right. You stood up right. for yourself. Yeah. But when I, when I still, when they, went, when they look at me and they go, He's supposed to be scared, but he's not scared. That's weird. <laughs> they got to think about it. Wait. It makes them wonder, what does he know about him that I don't yeah, know about what is, him? What's going on with him? Yeah. Mm. Uh, maybe I need to think about this. Um, throughout my life, I, I only had a, a few fights growing up as a kid. I uh, actually had one. I only had one real fight as a kid where I actually punched and got punched. And, and that ended up being like me against uh, two brothers. Otherwise, uh, and I, I got hit in the nose and my nose started bleeding. They, they took me in the house. Um, not a big deal, but I was winning in the beginning <laughs> until I got double teamed. And I was like, OK, that, that's the, oh, he's on top and I can't get him off. That's interesting. But um, that happened. And then uh, outside of that, it was always like people that were going to start a fight with me or that would try to sucker punch me or do something, you know, they People always try to catch me off guard. They would be like, um, we're playing basketball. Guys would get heated and, you know, whatever. You know, you're, you're, you're hacking me or whatever. And they throw an elbow and I duck out of the way. And they're like, oh, missed him. I thought for sure I was going to get him on that one, you know. Or they, a guy would throw a punch and I jump out of the way and I would submit him. I would hold him in a position where he couldn't do anything. And I'd be all right. And I would say, all right, I'm going to let you go. But if I let you go and you try to do it again, I'm going to hurt you. And I push them away and they turn around and look at me like, get you, man. <laughs> you know, but it was like they, they gave me their best shot. They missed. I caught them, but I didn't hurt them. And then I told them the next time I'm going to hurt you because I want you've been warned. So um, I never had to I never had to really hurt anybody. I was able to that defuse most situations when it, well, after a guy got caught. That usually diffuse the situation where they're like, okay, well, yeah, I don't have to, I'm not, I'm not trying to put myself in that position again. Cause next time I might get hurt. You know, I like, I remember a kid in school um, who, I don't know why, maybe he had been bullied in his life and um, he was a Polish kid. And I, um, he had a last name that I, I never heard. I, not many in Detroit, not many white kids because it's predominantly black city. So he's a white kid in my school. And I'm like, okay, not a big deal. 
cool. And I heard his name. And I was like, hey, man, is, is, is that I never heard that last name. Is that is that a Polish name? And he and he got mad. He decided, I guess kids have made fun of him. I, I didn't know. He thought but you were attacking him. He yeah. thought I was attacking him. And I was like, no, no, I was just curious. And he was like, but I was small. So maybe he felt like, oh, well, I'm going to bully you. So now he was like throwing his fist together and telling me he's going to kick my butt. And I'm like, bro, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to fight you. I was just asking about your last name. And then he just, he kept coming at me like day after day. He kept saying like, he's going to kick my butt and we're going to fight. And I was like, eventually I was like, okay, this is weird. Like, well, I'm just going to ignore you. But then one day in class, uh, I get up, go sharpen my pencil, and he comes up behind me, and he's in the back of my ear, going, I'm gonna "Kick your butt," you know, whatever. And I like, and I, I have my back to him, and I turn around, and I throw a punch, and I stop right before I hit his nose, and he goes, "Woo!" <laughs> that was he, like he stopped the reaction, he's like he just went, "Woo!" Like, like wow, that that would have hurt, and I walked away, and he never bothered me again. Mm. But you stood he, up for yourself. I stood up for myself. I didn't hit him, but I showed him I could have hurt you just now. You had no control of stopping what was coming, but I was kind enough not to do that. I didn't want to hurt you, so I did it. Now, how much of this approach to bullies was coming out of your martial arts training and how much of it was just kind of instinctive? Because it sounds like you're describing growing up in kind of a rough area. Yeah. And... You know, it's the survival of the fittest to a certain degree there. You know, you figure out what works and keeps you alive. Yeah, but the martial arts training gave me self-confidence. It gave me self-reliability. It gave me, um, it gave me the ability to, to make choices, mm -hmm. to, to decide to hurt someone see where it goes or to show them that I can hurt them and walk away or mm -hmm. completely just walk away to say whatever like uh, to to stop the challenge what what you gonna do okay Wh whatever walk away I mean even that sometimes just work I mean that that was go to a tough neighborhood yes it was um I was going to have to figure something out anyway, but yeah. the martial arts training gave me the tools to know how to deal with it. To gave me the tools to know how and the confidence to know that, you know what, if, if I have to, I can hit this guy in the throat and he's not going to mess with me anymore. I can do that. Right, right. I don't want to do that. I, if you got a knife and I feel like my life is threatened, well, you You've opened the door to now I have now I have the ability to hurt you because you you're threatening my life. So I have to protect, I have to save my own life. Self-reliance, you know. But if it's minor, if it's something that was more minor than that, then I could just try to control the situation and let it go. All right, cool. So now you know. And uh and we're good. So I, I didn't really have to fight much as a kid growing up in this crazy city, Detroit, which is the murder capital of the world. Um, at the time, uh, it was, um, I, I had a little sister who had a temper. <laughs> she she would to fight. attract these folks. She would she fight do the a lot. Yeah. She would, she would fight and people would be like, your sister's fighting two boys three blocks away and I'm <laughs> running down the street, jump sidekick, punch. I'm like that. Those were like fights where. It wasn't my fight. It was me protecting my sister, which is altogether different. Mm -hmm. All, you know, it's, you know, game on. If I'm protecting my sister, then that's, you know, you get what you get. That's, that's the way I felt then. And, um, and usually it was against some of the same people that I'd already battled with that were you know, consistent, like, just like, you know, consistently butthead. <laughs> and, and those people love us now. Hey, Walter, Janae. Yeah. They, you know, like I still, there with the advent of social media, there's these people, you know, especially with my fame, they're still in contact with us now. The same people that were, you know, bothering us before, like they're they're now fans and, and friends, I guess friends. But one of the weirdest experiences was getting a message 
from probably the biggest bully of, of El- from my biggest bully in elementary school who yeah. um i don't know if he still does but was listening to the show okay didn't start listening to the show because of me started listening to the show because he was doing martial arts right and then reaches out and i'm like i can't i can't do it <laughs> no, I, can't. I can't i can't do it can't do this with you right now yeah um how how long did you stick with this room i i did it for about four four years i got up to a brown belt um mm-hmm. and then i think childhood just turned things around i was like i want to be a kid i want to play football i want to sure. want to be out in the streets with my friend riding my bike instead of going directly from school to karate class and staying there until like eight o'clock i want to i want to have those moments and then you know money was tight mom so i think the argument that i don't necessarily want to go was easy for her to go all right well but it stayed with me it stayed with mm. me and it inspired me to um to be more athletic. So I uh, started learning how to do flips, you know, um, I, I learned tiger rolls and, and karate class, you know, on, yeah. on the mat doing tiger rolls. Right. So um, I applied that to a game. We would play in the street where we would run and we would, one person would sit down on the ground on all fours, you run and jump over them. And then mm-hmm. somebody else would get down and eventually like four people, you couldn't jump over them anymore. Now you had to dive over them. So I would dive and do my tiger roll and, um, and then we had another game where we take a rope and we would jump over the rope and it would get higher and higher. And eventually you couldn't jump over it. You had to dive over it. So you dive over it. I do a tiger roll, but eventually you could dive up so high coming down and the tiger roll was like diving straight at the ground and I couldn't get the timing right. So it hurt. It was mm. like, ow. <laughs> so, so I eventually was like, you know what? That hurts. I'm going to just flip over on my butt and eventually it hurt falling my butt hurt so i eventually was like i'm gonna land on my feet so i started jumping and doing that flip and landing on my feet and um that applied to uh you know once i learned how to do a front flip i started doing front flips over things like Mm -hmm. bushes and stuff like that and that became a skill set and then i uh i learned how to do back flips and somebody taught me how to do a back tuck so uh then when it came to um then I, you know, as I grew up, I got older, I started dancing. Like uh, some, some kids I've met in high school were like, hey, we're going to be in this talent show. And we're, we're pop lockers. We do these, you know, pop locking and stuff. And they're like, we, you want to be in it with us? Because you're so tiny. These were really tall guys, like 6'3". Mm. I, again, was like 4'11". They're like, we got this idea. And we want you to be with us. You're like, you know, you'll be in our group. And I was like, uh, I don't know how to do it. But they're like, we'll teach you after school every day. So I'm like, all right. So after school, we sit in the hallway and it teach me at Pop Lock and I was learning some stuff. And um, and eventually we got in a talent show and we won, which cool. was awesome. It was crazy because it was set up where it was like a, a New York park. And I mean, we didn't have much. We had a park bench. We had a trash can and we had a sign, a big old piece of cardboard that we had standing up that looked like it was a subway sign. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy would come up like he was on escalator, but he's just, you know, dancing like yep. he was on escalator, come up and he would dance in the park. The other guy sit on the park bench and he's reading the newspaper and the guy's showing off and he like kind of looks at him, but he's not really paying that much attention. Finally, he takes his newspaper down. He gets up. He challenges the guy. They go head to head. You know, one of them wins or whatever. They take so the, the newspaper and they throw it in the trash and they disappear down the subway together. All of a sudden, I come out of the trash can. Bop, I come out, I, I tear it up on the dance floor. Every crowd goes crazy. We win this talent show. It was like, wow. So now I'm pop locking. And then break dancing came out and mm-hmm. I started break dancing. So break dancing has all these tricks and, you know, flares and, and, and all these ground moves that are, are intricate and fun. And, and I was learning to do that kind of stuff. So my athleticism, it started with martial arts, led into dancing and doing martial uh, flips and stuff. And then uh, I I left Detroit and I got a scholarship to go to college, a school of performing arts. Mm-hmm. Went to uh, San Diego and started studying actual dance. Like I was learning jazz and tap and ballet, and modern and um, acting and uh, did stunt core back and stunt, stunt combat and 
and mm -hmm. um and these other things in school uh and then i i left school with a degree a bachelor of fine arts acting dancing singing um went and worked on cruise ships for a couple of years which i used some of my skills uh, like the the flips and that kind of thing and the dancing dance ability mm -hmm. i was able to you know utilize those skill sets uh on cruise ships decided let me see what la has to offer me got off in la and one day i got a call for this audition that was for power rangers we're looking for somebody that can that's an actor that can dance do martial arts and uh and do flips i got all three skill sets you was, know was that the your years, first real audition the first, first big audition first big audition for a tv show power rangers Power Rangers. Yep. Wow. So it's kind of being groomed for yeah. what this is, you know, and I hadn't studied martial arts again since then, but I kept a lot of my skill sets, my punches, my kicks. Sounds like probably eight years know. in between. Yeah, about eight years. And, uh, you know, I get on the show and, and, and then also being a dancer, having, um, having the ability to see something physical and emulate it hmm. helped me because uh, when I got on the set and it was like, you know, what I trained in Ishiru uh, was a lot of like short stuff. It was like on, when you work on the show, uh, martial arts show, and you're doing martial arts for television, it's not the same. It's not like short snap kicks. Everything's gotta be elongated. All the punches have to be big and long because you have to show that it's coming and you know you gotta it's it's it looks pretty you gotta make it look pretty and so it probably had uh, to be slower than what you were used to i'd imagine yes yes not as you know frenetic um or frantic um but yeah so i booked power rangers started working on the show the skill set came together and uh and you know the fact that they wanted me to create my own form of martial arts it was called hip-hop keto so in the script it said zach does hip-hop keto and you know so they took hop keto and put hip-hop in front of it and made it a form of martial arts some writer had a clever idea and uh, didn't know what that would look like but hired somebody to to put it together that happened to be me so with my three skill sets of dancing, martial arts, and gymnastics, I had to create a way to do martial arts and dance and flip that might seem effective, you know, mm. that might actually work in a way, you know, like um, obviously some of it is, some of it was just made for television, but some of it was really very applicable as we, as the show progressed, as I got more and more into what I was doing, I uh, it got it got pretty cool because I was like I was coming up with different ways to do things and um, applying different techniques. So now I'm working on the show and I'm working with stunt guys. I'm working with these amazing stunt guys that are all specialists in martial arts. Like they all they've grown up studying one particular martial arts or several martial arts. And all of them are giving me keys. They're mm -hmm. like, Hey, you should try this kick. I think you will be really good. If you try this, let me show you this kick, you know, or let me show you this flip or this, this spin, this is a Hong Kong spin, or this is a butterfly kick, or this is a, this is a kip up or like these techniques that I never learned from Ishinru, but because of my dance ability and because of my martial arts training, I'm very capable of picking up. So I remember uh, one of the guys, his name was um, Haim. Um, Haim, I think that's his name. Anyway, he, uh, he, he reminded me of Bruce Lee because he was like tiny, compact. He was uh, fast, really fast, and um, had amazing kicks and punches and uh, showed me this tornado kick where you know he if your left if your left foot is in front and right foot is back you step forward you jump off your right foot you kick with the same foot and land on the same foot so mm -hmm. it's like it's a, a circular kick in the air um and he said man i've been working on this kick for a long time i finally got it and he goes it goes like this like, show me show me so he shows me and i'm like oh that's cool and I, i'm like let me let me see if i could do it so i give it a shot or two and by the fourth time i do it i got it and he's like Oh man, I hate you. <laughs> Cause he's, he's been working on this kick forever and I pick it up in like four shots. Yeah. Um, and then I was able to, you know, do it on screen, which was awesome. Um, not 
necessarily a kick. It was a showy kick. It wasn't a yeah. kick that you would necessarily do in a in a real fight unless it was a finishing kick because landing was going to be a problem. But um, uh, it was it was it was cool. So I was able to do all these different things and apply the three skill sets and create this form of martial arts. And I, what I did was I incorporated like things that I saw Muhammad Ali do things that I saw Jackie Chan do. I incorporated, you know, parts of Capoeira, parts of uh, uh, Wing Chun and, and um, like parts of um, just all different kinds of martial arts, different kicks um, and, and punches and, and throwing techniques that were big and showy that I could do on the show to make it look cool. You know, not what, necessarily, what I want to remark on, cause you know, I can see you, the audience can't see you yes. is how clearly proud you are of the work that you put in. You know, yeah. we've had a, we've had a lot of actors, mar- stunt people, et cetera, on the show. And, and, and they're certainly proud, but the, the pride that I'm seeing in your face, as you're talking about creating this thing and, and codifying in a sense, all these things that you put so much time into to be part of this show, like it, it's really standing out for me. And I just wanted to remark on that. No, oh, thank you. I mean, I, I am proud. I'm, I'm proud because it was uh, something that wasn't done before and mm. um, something that I, I, I didn't know. It wasn't something I set out to do. It was something that was put in front of me. It was like they were writing the script. Zach does hip hop keto. So now it's my job to come up with what that is and um, to have done, to look back on the, my work and to see what I did coming from, uh, coming from just my mind of, because uh, at the end of the day, they couldn't tell me what to do. They couldn't say the stunt coordinator couldn't, like with other people, he could set up their fights. For me, it wasn't that. It was like, so what do you want to do? And I'm like, okay, give me, four putties. Uh, this putty is going to come from here. This putty is going to come from here. I'm going to do this. I'll do that. And then you try to kick me and I'll, I'll get out of the way in this way. I'll do like a, this dance move on the floor and I, I, we'll have ideas and we'll come up with stuff that was really cool and creative. Um, at one point we did this, this one trick. I remember where um, I'm being chased through the park by one of the putties and he's catching up on me. And I, uh, I jump up and I grab a branch and a tree. I swing over it and I come back and I kick him in the back as he runs under me. Right. So that's not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> and so um, because one, you, you need a lot of momentum to go up mm-hmm. over that, that branch. So take your body up and over. You know, you need a lot of momentum and strength. Hold on to the branch to do it. And then agility to come back down and be able to kick. Mm-hmm. Um, so we figured out how to do it. We tried it a couple of times. And then the guy that was the putty, who was the stunt guy said, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll push you. I'll push you. The camera's in front of me. So as you see me run and uh, jump, yeah. he pushed my butt. This gave me the momentum to go up and over the, the, the branch and then come back and kick him in the back as I came back down, which is really cool. And, and I think if anybody tried that, you figure out that's not easy. No. <laughs> that's, that's really difficult, you know, but um, no, in gymnastics, that's called a giant, uh, obviously unassisted. But right. anybody who spent time on a bar knows that's not an easy move to pull off. It's it's no. scary as heck having your feet all the way up there. Yeah. I mean, and and in an unnatural environment on a tree. Yeah, like even, a tree yeah exactly. Yeah. Even more so. Bark yeah, isn't exactly even, as forgiving on the hands as a, a gymnastic right. bar. A bar. It's not a not an organized situation, um, but it was fun. Like. Those kind of things to me yeah. were were fun and, and inspiring. And, and a lot of the fans now, a lot of my fans, they put together fights. They, they take like some of the best footage that they had of me fighting um, and they put it together. And so YouTube and I get to watch that and go, wow, that was that was cool. I like mm-hmm. wow, I did that. I mean, and Power Rangers wasn't one to be. We didn't have a lot of takes. We didn't have a week to put together a fight. We had. A morning we had like mm. a half hour you know all right so we're gonna be shooting in an hour and a half we gotta put the lights together let's block the scene we come in all right so what are you gonna do uh let's figure it out let's figure out the fight i'm barely stretched but uh we'll figure it out okay we'll do this flip boom 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 boom. all right now we walk away they they dress the set we come back out 
I got four takes to do it. Maybe I got maybe three takes to do it because they got to get a, a master shot. They got to get some, some, some close up footage. They're going to get some, you know, um, different angles. Mm-hmm. And so if I don't get in the master shot, if I try the trick and it fails and I fall, it's in there. They're keeping it. I just fail. I just like, you know, there was a kick I had to do where I jump up and I kicked with two feet. Right. Mm-hmm. And unless you have something su- super solid to kick off it and jump back and land on your feet, you went to the ground. Cause once you mm-hmm. kick it away, there's nothing there. So I did this kick, boom, I kick, I fall, I go to the ground, but now I got more people coming at me. So I got to go from the ground and come up and I'm coming up in kicks and doing sweeps and all this stuff. Um, it was rather imperfect. A lot of it. They I mean, left a lot of this up to you, didn't they? Yeah. A lot of it was up this to me. This is and not it, the it way most up, yeah. stunt work goes. Like you had, it sounds like the majority of what you were doing was up to you. It was up to me. Right. Which and, I think is awesome. It, I, I think there's an authenticity it was, it was to that. Awesome. And, and yeah. I had an amazing stunt team. So the, the great, the great thing is if something got missed, we would almost improvise. You mm-hmm. know, like something got missed. I was, I was supposed to punch. Like sometimes a punch was coming and I saw it and was like, I was supposed to block that, but instead I ducked it. So now mm-hmm. I'm doing a punch to like complete the movement and they were reacting, go away and we figure out a way to do it. But it was, it was probably the most challenging aspect of, um, of, Power Rangers for me, but the funnest because it was so sure. creative and it was so athletic and challenging. And at the end of the day, to see what was done, I was very proud of it. I was very mm. proud of the work I was able to do on that show. And and, and I think that that in in my mind um, is why it has the following it does because there are elements like that that you could look at it from a professional setting and say, you know what that could be better. That could be this, this isn't as polished here or that, Right. but that's authentic. And yeah. I think that inherently we pick up on that authenticity. And when we watch an episode of that, you know, you could easily watch an episode of power Rangers and, and, you know, just try it like, Oh, this is kind of cheesy, but you can also watch that exact same thing and say, here's a group of people who are just putting their heart and soul into it. And we get to enjoy that experience and watch it. And to me, that's the more powerful thing. And that's, I think why it's, has stood out for so long. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I think, I mean, it was, it was within reach, but I'd reach at the same time. It's like, it was enough to inspire you to try it. Let me see if I can do this. Let me see if I can do this, this jump side kick, this jump um, double kick with another kick before I land. Let me see if I could do, you know, was that that the culture on the show? Were you challenging and pushing each other? Um, it was kind of, I mean, like we, you know, of the boys, we were all, um, athletically inclined and inspired each other to do more. Like I can do flips. So the Red Ranger, Austin St. John wants to do flips. I want to do flips. So I, we go to the gym and we work out and I'll teach mm-hmm. him to do flips. So let's work on your back tuck. Let's work on your front tuck. Let's work on these things. And then he's showing me stuff. He's showing me hand stuff that he knows that I don't know because he's doing Kempo. And I'm like, all right, show me some stuff. So we would constantly work together. And then, yeah. you know, we would have challenges on set where we'd be doing handstands and we'd do a handstand and press down into a, like a plank and then try to press back up into another handstand. And I was like, who can do it the, the most times? You know, like, so I was like, we were constantly challenging each other to be better and, um, and, you know, to, to be uh, more athletic and mm-hmm. strong. And uh, it was cool. It was what, what's, what's more martial arts than that? You know, here you are, you're challenging each other. You're making each, each other better in the yes. context of the set and of the show. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and like Jason Frank came in and he started doing um, his jump spinning kicks and I've been doing, on the set, I've been doing like, you know, I would go, I would do a, a sweep into a jump spinning kick. That was one of my things that I would do normally. I do a sweep, jump spinning kick, or a jump spinning kick into a sweep mm-hmm. um, to take out multiple opponents. But he would do like these jump spinning kicks multiple. He would do three. And I was like, I can do that. <laughs> but you know, like that kind of became his thing. I was like, oh, I can, I can do that. But all right, I'll let you have it, you know. Mm. But he, um, he also, we had, I remember we had a sparring session in one episode 
And he came up with this great idea. I was like, that was really cool. Was like, I, I, I looked at this, this scene the other day. Zach and Tommy are sparring. And um, I mean, in general, Zach would get God. Like in general, they would let, the, you know, they would win more or less, mm-hmm. more or less. Um, but um, on this particular, this particular scene, I think uh, we were doing this thing and, and he's coming at me and I go to the ground and I do a spin and I come up on one knee and catch him and flip him. I, I throw him. But that wasn't my idea. It was Jason Frank's idea. He mm-hmm. said, hey, man, I think this would be cool. Like if you when you go down on the ground like that, if you come up, and you come up to this knee and I come in, you can take me by the head and throw me. And I was like, all right, let's try it. And we did it, and it looks so freaking cool. I was like, that is dope. <laughs> like, I, when I see it now, I'm like, man, that was like, I didn't, I wouldn't, that didn't come to me. That that came out of Jason Frank's mind. I was like, but he's such a great martial artist, you know, that he, you know, he, he it was one of this, one of the tools from his back, and he gave it to but me. But he also trusted you that you could pull it off and yeah, make him look yeah. good and not hurt him. And, yeah. and, you know, we've had enough stunt folks on the show over the years that I, I you know, I've not done stunt work. I, I don't pretend to know experientially what it is, but I, I get that sense that the trust, that bond, that collaborative process is so critical yes. to putting out a great product. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, and he was, uh, he's very skilled. So, I mean, between Austin, myself and Jay Frank, um, David was more of a gymnast. He wasn't a martial artist. So mm-hmm. he picked up as much as he could and he would do well, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same. I would say that, Austin has studied uh, Kempo and his father was a martial artist and they came up together is, you know, he was very skilled at, at um, martial arts. And then Jason Frank had his own karate school. So he was, you know, they were both more martial artists than I was. I studied Ishiru, I was a brown belt. And, uh, and that was my, that was my technique. But I also had this dancer ability to pick up anything I saw. So show me something, I'm going to be able to get it. Cause I understand timing, understand movement, understand balance. I, I got it. So, um, it, it wasn't, my skill set wasn't, um, the same as theirs, but my ability was, was the same or greater to, to pick up and do things. And it certainly sounds like your skill progressed over that time. Yes. You know, you're, 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 you're training, you're working with these other wonderful martial artists yes, and you're getting better absolutely. by extension. Yeah. And it, it makes me wonder because, you know, you're not filming the show anymore. It's been a little while. How has martial arts fit into your life since Power Rangers and, and up till now? Well, after I left the show, um, I, I still wanted to study because I, I was enjoying martial arts so much. And so I started studying Hapkido. I actually went and studied Hapkido for a number of years. And, um, and I, I did that for a number of years until I, I started suffering from injuries. Mm. So I had hamstring problems that were turning into a lower back problems. And I was like, okay, well, I'm getting older. I can't beat myself up too much. Let me do something else. But I still want to stay active. So I went back to dancing. I started, I, I started learning salsa dancing. Cool. And then that became a thing because it was like, well, huh. Um, now I'm sweating and I'm dancing with these beautiful women. <laughs> oh no. As compared to being kicked Life in the head by these big guys. I'm like, you know, I think I like the women part. This is this is better for me. So I started dancing, um, started dancing salsa. And uh after about four years, uh I became a world champion. So I'm a world champion no salsa way. dancer. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. I dance all these Latin styles now. So I dance salsa, bachata, kizomba, zook. Um Merengue, cha cha, po, um, you know, not in a, a professional capacity, but I, I, I'm pretty good, you know. Like I, <clears throat> I dance salsa, uh, which was not formal salsa, not a uh, ballroom salsa, but I dance salsa, and I, I did win a world championship, um, and uh, everything else I just just play in, like zook, I, I love it. It's Brazilian. So um, that that became my transition. So I stopped doing martial arts. I still train myself. I, mm-hmm. I still throw kicks and punches and and work on technique. I'm not really um, in the gym doing that. Although I'm thinking about thinking about getting back in and, and, and working on some boxing. I'm going to think 
I never really studied boxing as a as a form, yeah. you know, completely. And I'm thinking about doing that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I just feel I, I always encourage people to take martial arts or or to do it because not only does it is it good for your body, but it's good for your your mind, your spirit, and your self confidence. It is something that allows you to to feel confident and to walk around in the world um, feeling as if you're not a victim, yeah. you know, that you are capable of, of handling yourself if you need to. Uh, totally and, and, and often you won't have to because the confidence is enough. If people see it, people see it in you, they say something's wrong because you're supposed to be afraid and you're not afraid. So that's odd. So I'm going to be cautious and maybe move away, you know, which is, I think, great. I love it. You got any projects coming up? Are you still acting? Still acting. Um, I am auditioning and I'm, uh, I got a couple of projects. I can't really talk about them until they come that's, out. That, that's okay. How, how about, how about the last one that happened that you can? Is there any, is there uh, the last project I mention? did, I worked on, um, it was interesting. I worked on a show called Boomerang and yeah. I put the suit back on for the first time in 25 years. How did crazy. that feel? It was, it was interesting. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the show was kind of a parody. It was kind of a parody. And this guy, um, he knocks out and is kind of in this dream state and goes to heaven mm -hmm. and when he goes to heaven he ends up first in a church and i am there dressed as the black ranger and he's like oh my god you're the black ranger i'm like what no I, i'm i'm the i work in the church no you you no you're zach you know it's warp time it's, it's you and they're like i don't know what you're talking about so it was like, and then he goes on this whole journey. At the end of the day, he comes out to find out that I'm God's gatekeeper. So that's kind of cool. I was like, I, the Black Ranger is God's gatekeeper. I'm cool with that. That sounds cool. You know, um, it's quite the promotion. Um, but it was the first time I put on a suit, not to do any martial arts or anything, but just as the character. And uh, I thought that was fun. I thought it was fun. I can't believe that we're coming up on our 30 year anniversary because I'm only 29. You know, right, so, exactly. So, it's yeah. I mean, I'm you know, twenty. I'm, and a half. I'm, I'm twenty. I'm twenty five. You know. Well, there you go. See, we are we are so young. That's right. We're so young. But what did you but, say? What, what did I write down? We honor you. Sexy and handsome. Yes, sexy and handsome. There it is. There we go. <laughs> um, my cute days are gone. Nah, I, I think I accept cute still. I still get cute. Oh, you're so cute. I'm like, okay, I'll take that now. I, I think the older we get, the I, I think there's a there's a reverse bell curve right like you're okay yeah. with being cute when you're really young and you're okay with being cute when you get older you know it's yeah. like all right i'll, I'll take it i'll take it i'll, I'll take i'll take it where i can get well, it because cute is friendly and it's, it's right. happy so i'll be i'll be happy and friendly that's cool yeah. you know I, I you know i just did when i was cute when i was a kid it was like just because people want to put me on a shelf and look at me <laughs> like oh look it's just look at him oh so, oh like, don't do that to me. Get your hands away from my face. Stop it. Oh. Don't touch my hair. <laughs> awesome. Where can people find you? Um, I am on social media everywhere. Mm -hmm. On Instagram, at Walter E. Jones. On um, Twitter, at Walter E. Jones. On TikTok, at Walter E. Jones. It's kind of a common thread. Yeah. Um, on it's Facebook, at Walter Emmanuel Jones fan page. The problem is Emmanuel is not traditional. It's E-M-A-N-U-E-L as compared to two M's or two L's. Just one M, one L. Walter Emmanuel Jones fan page. I, uh, I bet if they it, search, I mean, we're going to drop all these links, but I bet if they search Walter Jones fan page. Yeah. How many up. other Walter Jones are there with fan pages? There is a football player named Walter Jones. Is well, we famous. need to get, we need to take care of that. That's that can't, <laughs> that, that's unnecessary. Right. He's like, hey man, you, you, you're messing up my vibe. What you doing? Um, but it's cool. Um, yeah, find me uh, on my anything that I got coming out, and I, there are a number of things coming up. Thirtieth anniversary of Power Rangers is right around the corner, and uh, thirty years, y'all can't believe that. Thirty years, forty countries, ninety languages, crazy. Uh, we're still here. Let's let's uh, let's 
let's celebrate together. You know, that's what I'm saying. Find me on, on, uh, on Instagram or Twitter or Twitch and, um, let's connect. Come and see me out at the comic cons. I am making appearances all over the place, uh, both internationally and nationally. And, uh, I love to see the fans. I love to, uh, take photos and, and, uh, I love to make you smile. So nice. Nice. Not, not only has it been 30 years since, you know, the original, but it's still going new iterations. I mean, we, we had, we had somebody on it'll, that episode will air before this, but Justin Ortiz was on talking about his involvement and his wife's involvement a little bit with the, with the new one coming out and everything. And that was just super cool to see that something, you know, when something resonates, it resonates, people get it. And, and you were there to launch it. And I think that that's amazing. And I, I got like 10 action figures, three pops, four series of comic books. It's crazy. It's so cool. It's crazy. Well, well I, I got I gotta ask. I know we're gonna start widening out here, but what was it like the first time you saw yourself as an action figure? Was that a trip? Because like was, you could buy action. You, if, you, if you're willing to put in the money now, you can do it. It was just it wasn't uh well the first one I saw was just the black ranger in the suit. So it was like, okay, that's me, but not it's not really me. It's like sure. not. But the first one with my face was like, yo, that's me. Hey, it's not a pretty face, but it's my face. <laughs> you know that's that's wow okay interesting um it was very cool uh i think and it was like the, the one with the flip head so uh the first one i saw i like just, i spent uh, probably half a day walking up going it's more for time <laughs> it's more for time <laughs> like i did it again do, do it again walter it's more for time. hey it was like it was fun you know good times good times how do you want to end what are your what are your final words to the folks listening um, final words. All right. So martial arts is a beautiful thing. I, uh, I encourage all parents to involve your kids in martial arts because it is uh, a way to, to help give them confidence in themselves, to help teach them self-obedience, self-confidence and self-reliance. I think those are important qualities, whether you're male or female and a great starting point. Uh, to uh, a great base to work from and to build towards in your future. What a fun conversation. My favorite part, if you couldn't tell from the conversation, was just the environment. You know, I've never really had the desire to be part of a TV show or a, a movie set, but the way Walter talked about it and this idea of challenging each other, pushing each other, making each other better. I mean, first off, what's more martial arts than that? But if I had an opportunity to be in that environment and get better because the people around me are getting better and there's an end result of displaying that talent to the world, I would absolutely jump in on that. So, Walter, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing. Great meeting you. I hope to see you again soon. Listeners, check out the show notes. Check out everything that we've got in there. If you want the full version, it's not in your podcast player. It's at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's where you're going to find the videos and the links and the photos and all the cool stuff that we've got for not just this, but every episode we have ever done. And if you want to support us in the work that we're doing, you've got some options. You can share an episode, maybe leave a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, Facebook, anywhere that seems sensible, or maybe tell a friend, contribute to the Patreon even, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Interested in having me come to your school, run a seminar? People are already rebooking seminars from just a few months ago because we had such a good time. Well, if you are interested in that, reach out jeremy at whistlekick.com. Don't forget the code podcast15 to save 15% on anything at whistlekick.com. And maybe you know someone that we should have on the show or a topic that we should approach. Go ahead, email me. Find us on social media while you're out there. We're at whistlekick everywhere you could think of. And that brings us to the end. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.